From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, folks, and welcome to Ropecast. This is Peter Tisher. Hello, I'm Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. Hi, Peter. Did you think you were going to get bored uh, that this podcast? <laughs> you mean my my crossword puzzle? Here? Yeah, well, you brought a crossword <laughs> puzzle to the studio. <laughs> Why is that? Well, it's something that I've I've got into as part of language teaching. Uh huh. Uh huh. Did you solve it yet? This is my own puzzle. Oh, you mean you created the I puzzle? I did. I did. Oh, the, huh. Okay. I I use this quite a lot in language teaching. It's a way of recycling vocabulary. Um, good idea. I encourage my students to try to solve my puzzles. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the words they're looking for are words we've just come across in things we've been doing in class. So it's a way of reminding them about these words or phrases. That's a that's a good idea, I think. But uh, frankly speaking, for me, crossword puzzles are usually too hard in English. Yes, I can understand that. They're hard enough if you're a native speaker, and if you're not, mm -hmm. then it must be very, very difficult. Yeah, but that's because you have weird clues. <laughs> we do. And in contrast to the Americans, I think they, they tend to go in for different kinds of puzzle. Well, well, first of all, they only mostly use those word search puzzles where you have yeah. a grid of letters and you have to find certain words inside that grid of that's, that's letters. A, that's another technique we use in language teaching. Right. That's used there. That's feasible. But even with the crossword puzzles, the clues are not as difficult. They're more difficult than in Germany, mm. where you have extremely short clues. Yeah. But the, the British, I mean, you have like whole paragraphs just to find one word. Yeah, well, this is what we call cryptic crossword puzzles. Uh -huh. And cryptic means like coded. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the code in order to find the answer, to find the solution. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of rules or regularities so that if you get into this, if you do crossword puzzles regularly, mm -hmm. then these things become familiar so to you. So you get the it, knack. It gradually gets easier. Although it's never easy. Uh huh. Well, can you, can you give us, or me, some examples? <laughs> yeah, even with, even with relatively straightforward clues, there may be references to cultural things that outsiders are not aware of. Uh -huh. So um, a crossword puzzle aimed at an international audience might have to take a very simple example from one of my crossword puzzles, Hamlet's concern. And you're looking for a two-letter word. Mm -hmm. now, two letters. If you think, what do I know about Hamlet? Is there a speech that I'm familiar with? Uh -huh. uh, ah, yeah. B. Two yeah. B. Exactly. Uh huh. So okay. You know, that's a relatively straightforward clue. If you uh -huh. know Hamlet, then you probably you can find a two-letter word. All right. Okay. But then, when we get more cryptic, there are anagrams, which that... means that you're given the letters you need, but in the wrong order. Okay. And sometimes you're given a clue that it is an anagram that you're dealing with. For example, this again is one of my own clues. Uh -huh. Twisted rows. Uh -huh. So twisted suggests you have to turn the letters around. Right. Rows. Uh, R O W S. R O S E. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the flower. Twisted rows becomes divine. So twisted rows. You're playing with the letters of rows. Do I need a synonym for divine now? That's it. Uh -huh. Something to do with a god. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So I have to twist around R O S E. Yeah. Uh, wait, think, think sore a, doesn't work. <laughs> think of a god with those four letters. Uh, a god. Yeah. Bozer, Bozer. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't make it. <laughs> Eros. Ah. Okay. Okay. Eros. Yeah. Yeah. You can argue whether that's a god or not, but. It would have been easier if you had sex become sexy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those are anagrams. And, okay. and there was a hint there that ah, you're, you're right. dealing with an anagram. The word yeah. twisted there. Yeah. Okay. Then there are hidden clues, mm -hmm. mostly in the form of what we call a, a read through. That means as you read through the clue, the letters you're looking for are right there in front of your eyes. They're just a little bit hidden. A, a simple example. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Seen in prize rose. I've got the word rose in there. Mm -hmm. Nothing 
seen in prize rose. Oh, a synonym for nothing? Yeah. That is in... Prize the, rose. In prize rose. Zero. Exactly. Ah, okay. Prize yeah. rose. Uh, so okay, the, zero. The actual word I, is there. It's staring you I'm in the face. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one, so, one more. So that's a read through. Uh -huh. And then, of course, English has lots of homophones. Homophones. Uh -huh. That is, words sound the same, but uh -huh. are actually written differently and have different meanings. Yeah. So we can play with that. For example, sounds like a man can work out here. It sounds like that's a clue that you're thinking of homophones. Uh huh. So this a would be man. a man, a man's name, and you can work out there. Um. Jim. Jim, right. I didn't tell you it was a three-letter word. That would have helped. Yeah, but I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so you got Jim I got it. I, I was yeah. thinking of yeah, a workout. Yeah. Place, and that's a gym. Right. So we're playing with the but sounds. But I have of to words. spell it G Y M. But it only sounds like J I N. Or you can have homographs, words uh -huh. which are written the same but with different meanings. Okay. Um, here I would give you just a lake. Now you've got just yeah. and lake, two English words that look exactly alike. One means just and the other means lake. Think of the Lake District. Think of William Wordsworth and where he lived and wrote. Oh, wrong country. I don't know my <laughs> way around here. <laughs> now you have to give me that one. Well, the, the, the area we call the Lake District has Mere, yeah. M-E-R-E, -E, as a, an, an alternative to lake. Windermere, Grassmere. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So the word Mere, uh -huh. by chance, we have two different words that look alike. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, difficult. Uh, look, we're going to have to put a few of those on our website. I okay. think this is something you've got to read as well as yeah. listen to, right? Okay. So, folks, www.ropecast.de. You'll find everything you need. And here's what we'll do. We'll put on links to websites that have crossword puzzles. Okay. Okay. And ready for our next Ropecast, I'll prepare a crossword puzzle myself, which we can also make available. Oh, that's very nice. Okay. Folks, uh, so if you don't know what to do during the holidays, do a crossword puzzle that comes right from your favorite podcaster, Roger Charlton. Oh, thank you for that flattery. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.